Hey guys, I'm really excited to help you get some more club head speed and really to get that acceleration that you want. I know a lot of players, they start their downswing, they feel like they're kind of burning up that speed back here. Maybe it's a little bit of a cast. And then as you get down to impact, it feels like you're putting out tons of effort. It feels like you're, you're getting as much effort as you can from your toes all the way up to the top of your head, but you're not getting the speed that you want. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get that speed in the right way so that you feel like you have that real snap, that acceleration happening at contact. It feels like the ball just jumps off the face with a lot of club head speed, goes nice and long and, and, and far in the air. How do you get that to happen? Where is that coming from? And I got a great drill for you, starting from a shorter swing, really building up a lot of speed from there, and then gradually accelerating from that. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so where this all starts from is making sure that we load our body properly and that we can release those arms and release those wrists to get speed. The rotation of the body adds a lot of speed, but we have to transfer that rotation out into the club head. If it doesn't get to the club head, we're not gonna get the acceleration. Everything's just gonna be slow. We're gonna feel like we're putting out tons of effort. We're not getting anything out of that. So what I want you to do is go ahead and make a little half backswing. So we're only gonna swing back until our hands are about waist high. Now, when you usually do this, naturally you're gonna end up going a little farther back. That's okay, but just try to, don't get, try to not allow those to get any higher than waist high for the feeling of this drill. What I want you to do here, as you're doing that, keep it pretty wide. I don't want you to pick the club edge straight up or you're gonna start to cast as you go down. I want you to keep it wide and then really sharpen that up, get a nice narrow angle. And then as you're coming through there, I want you to whip that club head as fast as you can through contact into a good, good full finish. So really work on these key pieces. Number one, wide takeaway. Number two, I wanna get a ton of lag don't let that hand go very far back. And then number three, I'm gonna get all the way on through. I wanna see your chest facing as far left as you can get it. If you're not very flexible, that's okay. Just go as far as you can. I wanna see that right toe all the way up, the right foot all the way up on the toe, those hips all the way around, really following through to the maximum follow through position. So let's go ahead and try that out. And what we're gonna do, if you're at a driving range, you're gonna do these and see how far you can hit the ball doing this. If you're in your living room, if you have anything that measures speed, go ahead and hook that up. Any device is fine. I'm just trying to see what's the absolute maximum speed I can get with a little tiny half backswing. Let me go ahead and give it a rip and see what happens here on my flight scope. So again, I probably took that back a lot farther than it felt. To me, I felt like I only came back to here. I know I probably got somewhere back around in here. Try to keep it as short as you can, but again, get that snap of speed. So there, 100 miles, 109 miles an hour, 109.3, 250 carry. After roll, that was 283. I'm pretty happy with that for what felt like a pretty short backswing. So once I'm there, let's go ahead and add a piece to this. So far, we've just worked on acceleration of the club and getting that to snap through contact. The second piece is when I'm going back, I have to create a really big shoulder turn very early. So club is, the club is wide, but my shoulders are all the way fully turned. What that allows me to do is build a lot of power in my body early in the backswing. That way when I change directions, I'm getting really wound up. A lot of times what players will do that don't hit it very far, they'll start to pick that club up with their hands and arms and they're not moving the body first. So feel like your body's kind of leading the way and the club head's almost trailing behind. So I'm here, big shoulder turn, and then bam, I'm gonna rip on through there. I'm gonna have a bunch of lag, I'm gonna release that club through contact, and it's gonna look just like this. I'm trying to get as much swing speed as I can. 100% effort. These aren't for accuracy, these are for pure distance. Once we get that timing and that acceleration, then we can tone it down a little bit and get a little bit more accuracy. So again here, I'm working on shoulder turn, and then I'm really gonna turn it on through contact. Let's try to give that a whirl and see what happens. All right, so a miss hit, a little off the heel, pretty straight, it's in the fairway. But man, I really turned on that speed through contact. Let's see if I got a little faster there, trying to get a little bigger shoulder turn. It didn't read my club head speed. Let's go with one more, but it carried 254. My total distance was 280, what does it say there, 289? Yeah, 289.9, almost 290 with what felt like a little half back swing. Let's do one more. Big shoulder turn, and man, I'm gonna really turn it on. 100% effort. If, it, if I whiff the ball, I'm completely fine with that with this drill. Yeah, so I almost missed it. 
way off the hosel, but I got the club head speed that I want. I can tell that club is really whipping on through there. Again, don't worry about where it goes at first. All the way up to 111 miles an hour club head speed, it said 244 carry. That thing was a low bullet. It would have run and run and run. So it's talking uh, almost 300 is what it would have calculated that ball to roll out to. So that's pretty good for what felt like a really slow swing speed or a really short back swing to me. Now, once you've got that snap of speed at contact, let's build that out a little bit into more of a full swing. I'm gonna have that same feeling. As I make my back swing, big shoulder turn all the way to the top. I'm not setting my wrist really early. I'm gonna let that stay nice and wide. And then from there, I'm gonna narrow that up and get that lag. And then right through contact, that's when I'm gonna turn on the speed. Now the reason this drill works is because when I'm making a short back swing, I don't have time to cast. If I wanted to cast, I wouldn't have anywhere to do that. So that short back swing and I really have to turn on the lag and then rip through the ball, it helps you to get the lag. Now when we bring this out to a full swing, it's gonna make it a lot easier to get that lag and snap happening right at the golf ball. So same swing keys, I'm just gonna make a big full swing I feel like my arms get nice and high in the top of the backswing. And let's see if we can get this thing going a little bit farther than what we did in the previous ones. There we go, a little miss hit, a little bit off the toe. Not too bad, down the right center of the fairway. I felt like I got a pretty good snap at impact. 120.9 on the club head speed, definitely happy with that. A little over 300 yards for the total distance, 285 carry, so not too bad at all for a very slight miss hit. I'll take a 300 yard miss hit any day of the week. So again, to recap, short swing, that's gonna force you to build that lag. 100% effort. I'm trying to go all out for speed. Make sure you get that good full finish. Build that lag and then snap that through contact. Then as we lengthen our swing, we're gonna start to keep that good shoulder turn, that nice wide swing, build that same amount of lag and release it at the ball. That's gonna get that speed happening at the ball, lots of acceleration. Then you can tone it down for there. For this drill, 100% effort. Go out to the driving range, hit 20 or 30 balls doing this, make your practice swings in between, see how far you can let it fly. Then we'll tone it down in the future as we get more comfortable with the acceleration at impact. I guess so wait right there, there's one more thing we still need to do. We talked about that lag, that snap of acceleration in this video, and we touched a little bit on getting that big shoulder turn to bring this into a full swing. That's what we call the power turn in the top speed golf system. That's one of the most important things you can do for your distance. Now I've got a great bonus video for you. It's usually only available to premium members of the website, but I'm gonna play a preview for that here in a second. Just click the I card up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. You'll start to ingrain that power turn and you'll be hitting it really far out driving most of the guys in your local groups. So best of luck, let's go ahead and get started in that power turn. But with the correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up that's gonna allow us to have a lot of power. So we don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power. And we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos. And I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now here, we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're gonna see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.